Alrighty, hello and welcome back. This is day two of this year's test dive conference organized by Nokia. We have a lot of great pre presentations for you today. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and be sure to have Discord open in a separate tab and be ready to ask any questions during our Q&A sessions after each talk. And also a reminder, if there are any lags in the audio or in the slides, please be patient. There is no need to write it in our chats. If anything goes wrong, you can always try refreshing your browser just in case. And of course, our special thanks to our sponsors this year, the Association for the Quality of Information Systems, SJSI, known as Polish Testing Board, is a nonprofit organization that supports the development of the IT community through broadly understood support of personal development. An important element of activities is the unification of terminology concerning aspects of quality management, in particular testing or business analysis, and support for local and international initiatives to implement good and proven processes and practices. By the accreditation process, SJSI, take care of the quality of training courses preparing for international ISTQB and IREB certifi certificates of all market participants in Poland. The members of the association supported by SJSI are also speakers at foreign conferences. And speaking about uh, conferences, SJSI is the main organizer of the oldest and largest tester conference in Poland, Test Juarez, and others, including conferences for analysts, requests. SJSI also acts as a local board of ISTQB, IREB, and TMMI, offering to con conduct examinations of these organizations. Now, I hope everyone had their Discord uh, channels open and ready for asking questions, because please welcome our first presenter for today, Konrad Kolski who will be presenting model-based design from requirements till testing. Konrad Kolski is an application engineer at Oprogramowanie Naukowo Techniczne, MATLAB and Simulink authorized seller for Poland. Working on a daily basis with MATLAB and Simulink, he is responsible for presenting its technical capabilities, consulting customers' product development workflows, and helping with transition to model and simulation-based approach. He is also engaged in training en engineers from commercial companies and educational institutions in advanced use of Simulink software. He specializes in model-based design methodology with focus on embedded software BNB, automated code generation, and control system design. He holds a master's in mechatronics with a specialization in mechatronics system design and exploitation. Please welcome Konrad Korski. Konrad, the screen is yours to share. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, in today's presentation, I would like you to show to you how we can use uh, the model-based design approach in testing uh, designs when they are based on models. The agenda of presentation will be as follows. At first, a short introduction to model-based design uh, just to start at the same level. And then we'll quickly move on to the case study uh, where we will see how we can use MATLAB and Simulink tools and the validation and verification workflow to test our designs when they are implemented in Simulink as models. Uh, and to begin, when we are working on some kind of project, we are developing a solution, usually we'll work with specific workflow just to make sure that all the tasks are conducted in order and everything will end successfully. In automotive uh, industry, usually uh, we are using the V development process where the work begins with definition of requirements for our project, uh, where we talk with customers, the people who order uh, 
uh, our works, we also take into account some industry standards. Then we'll begin with specification of our system. Uh, we start designing algorithms and then we move to the bottom part of the process where we start to implement our design. Here we usually start writing code and then we move on to the right branch of the process where all the tasks related to testing and integration begin from the uh, subsystem and unit testing to the whole system level testing and complete integration. Uh, when it comes to model-based design process of developing solution, the key point is to start testing as soon as possible. So we are sure that our solution is correct from the early beginning. In the classical process of designing solution, uh, usually when we work in many environments with many teams working on requirements, other people working on design and uh, coding the implementation, there is a lot of information to pass around in different formats, be it file formats or maybe sometimes written documentation. Uh, this can impact negatively the speed at which our project will be finished and that's why the key point of model-based design is to make sure that every part of the design process from the requirements to the design implementation and of course testing and verification is done in the similar environment where uh, flow and information is unobstructed and very natural. And this is the main point of model-based design where the model that is executable specification of our solution, for example, embedded algorithm, uh, is becoming the key component that is being tested on every stage of our work from the early uh, requirement specification phase all the way to the final implementation, just to make sure that uh, there are no critical errors found on the late stages of implementation. And let's now quickly see how we can uh, use it in practice with our case study. The example that we'll work on is this system where we have a piece of software, the embedded controller for uh, automotive, automatic gear transmission. Uh, the model includes, of course, test scenarios, some kind of driver inputs, the model of engine that will be working with car and transmission, and of course, vehicle dynamics. In the component that will focus on testing and verifying is this one TCU, which holds the control algorithm. When it comes to uh, modeling with MATLAB and Simulink, uh, we are working with a software that let us design our algorithms as uh, block diagrams where each action is a block and the signals are uh, corresponding numerical values that are being transferred between components and uh, calculations. But also MATLAB and Simulink environment allows us to use our existing work in our project. It doesn't mean that when we are working with Simulink, we have to construct everything as block diagrams. Uh, MATLAB and Simulink include several features that let us implement external language components, for example, handwritten C++ code, uh, Java packets, Python modules into Simulink model or, for example, MATLAB script, and then simulate our solution with something we already created, we are having to rewrite everything from the beginning. And several features include, for example, calling MATLAB function from external handwritten application, or for example, uh, generating startup SMUs from Simulink models for co-simulation in external environments. And when it comes to design, in MATLAB and Simulink or design in any other environment, usually we begin with requirements. 
they define our system from the beginning. They include, for example, interface specification and, of course, what exactly are we going to design. So conformity with requirements is critical to successful development process of our solution. Uh, through tools like Simulink requirements, we are able to link our design with specific requirements from the very beginning. This way, every developer who works on the component or tester who is verifying the functionality of our system is able to reference back to the requirements to make sure everything is implemented correctly. Uh, the requirements also implement a very important factor, which is traceability required by many industrial or industrial standards, uh, making sure that every part of our component model or code is necessary to uh, fulfill specific requirements of our system. And when it comes to requirements management in Simulink, uh, we are again able to work with many external uh, environment and formats from the very simple like importing documentation of our requirements directly from uh, Microsoft Word documents or uh, Excel spreadsheet. There is also available integration with external environments such as IBM Doors, Polarion Perforce, so we can include these tools in our existing workflow. Uh, the import of recommends can work in a read-only way or uh, editable way. We can include rich text with graphics and tables. The process is fully automated. When importing recommends from documents, we are using existing document structure for example, bookmarks or uh, other elements uh, that are specifying hierarchy in our documents, so we don't have to rewrite everything. And requirements are attached to our components with this drag and drop interface. Every time we connect requirements with component, we are declaring that this element is responsible for implementing these particular requirements. Uh, and at the same time, we can track the implementation of our requirements. For the traceability part, we can create interactive links from the document back to model, which will allow us to trace requirement from the document to the part of model that is implementing this requirement, here we can see the highlight. Additionally, all the information about requirements can be hidden with just one click. Thanks to that, people who are working, for example, on design, have clear view of the algorithm without additional elements that are about requirements. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, when it comes to working with MATLAB and Simulink tools and model-based design, uh, we have modules like MATLAB Report Generator and Simulink Report Generator that allows us to automatically generate documentation. Uh, this is something very helpful. We don't have to waste time on writing papers manually. Everything we design in MATLAB and Simulink, all the tests we do, uh, can be transferred automatically to either HTML documentation on PDF, so we can document our work uh, very quickly and effectively. Uh, the process is automatic. Additionally, uh, we have a dedicated interface to uh, customize our report, include additional elements. Here we can see the model with all the requirements already implemented. And when we want to generate a simple report, all we have to do is pick a correct option and document is generated automatically. Of course, these documents are present on our drive. We can share them among the company, uh, among customers without any abstractions. The model include 
all these snapshots of components, also integrative links back to the requirements so we can trace everything to the source. And when it comes to modeling, from the early beginning, we want to make sure that our model, for example, satisfies specific modeling standards uh, or standards uh, required by the industry you are working in, for example, ISO 26262 from the automotive industry. For that, we can use simulink check that is the first step of testing our design for conformity with specific norms. Uh, the simulink chat is able to verify our model for coding standards that will relate directly to the implementation phase of our design and modeling standards that are checking the model from all the necessary components. And as I mentioned, simulink check is able to verify our design, for example, for conformity with uh, popular industry norms like ISO 26262 or other high integrity norms and also norms related to the implementation, for example, MISRA C 2012 or CERT C standards for secure coding. And when it comes to practical things that we can verify in our model, for example, verifying our solution against EF61508 norm, we can test and verify our model if all the components are working correctly. For example, this norm specifies some rules about using uh, blocks doing operation like absolute value. For example, when this kind of block is operating on a on integer 16 type inside, we can produce an uh, unreachable code. This is detected at this point of uh, testing. The same time, norm specifies that all the blocks that are using doing logical operators need to output uh, signals or variables that are of Boolean type. All this analysis is being done statically without need to simulate our model. And the key point is that later everything we create in the model will transfer exactly as it is into the generated code. So the more errors and mistakes we find on the modeling phase, the less work we have to spend on testing the final code. And how it works in practice, let's see this demonstration that will verify our component, the ECU for shift control against coding standards. This is the component itself. We are launching the model advisor tool and we can select if we want to verify just one component on whole model, whole algorithm. And then we are selecting the task for checking. This time, let it be uh, one specific task. From here, we can see everything that's available. And now let's focus on MISRA C 2012. It has a set of specific checks to run on our model. It's being done automatically. During that, there can be simulation of model or just static compilation. And there we go with a report. The report includes information which checks passed, which did not. Also includes warnings where some kind of user integration is required. And for example, uh, one of the things that uh, MISRA standard is specifying are operation on signet integers, the right shift operation. Uh, which are not allowed because the final implementation of this operation depends very much on the uh, integration process and used compiler. That's why MISRA recommends that this kind of operation should not be 
allowed and this exactly is being stored right here. All the links in here lead directly to the configuration of our model where we can decide if we want to confirm this change or not. Additionally, we can automatically modify all options to conform with all the recommended settings. So this means that uh, Simulink Chat not only tells us what is wrong, but also tells us why it's wrong and where we can fix it. We have full control over the process. And when it comes to MatWorks products like the toolboxes I'm talking about, uh, they are products that are qualified for use in several industry standards. This means that MatWorks has certificates issued by two suit uh, institution for their tools. And when we are working on solution that finally will be certifi certified under one of these norms, we have much less work to do because we don't have to perform all the tasks of proving that our tools are qualified for the process we are designing, but we can also we can generate automatically reports, include certificates from MatWorks to prove that the tools we used are qualified for these processes and our solution can achieve certification much sooner. Uh, all the critical components used in developing solution from the beginning, like Simulink requirements, through the testing, simulink check, simulink test, design verifier, and of course implementation with embedded coder and automatic code generation are supported for these key industry standards. Additionally, when we are working with the standards mostly used in uh, aerospace and defense standards like DO norms, uh, there is also a thing called qualification kit, which contains a set of already created test scenarios and cases that automatically will prove that the tools we are using are qualified for these processes. So also we are saving a lot of time when we want to certify our solution. And all of these things let us automate and speed up works when we are moving to the next phase of actual design testing and design verification. When it comes to verification, before we actually simulate our model, because Simulink is all about simulation, we can use uh, static formal methods of verification to analyze our design for most common errors that can appear in code, for example, presence of death logic, uh, out of bond array access, or uh, arithmetic errors such as division by zero on integer overflows. This is done fully statically, which means we don't necessarily need a complete design at this point. We can only have some kind of uh, basic solution or uh, frame of our design with specific requirements or constraints, and then this tool is able to analyze our design and come to conclusion if, for example, this kind of error can appear in our code or not. Let's see Simulink Design Verifier in action. So here is our component, the ECU. We are now launching the Design Error Detection module we can configure for these common errors like dead logic or outbound bond array access division by zero integer overflow and so on. And then we begin the automatic analysis phase. This does not require simulation. So as I said, our model does not need to be finished at this point yet, which confirms that with Simulink and MATLAB, we can start testing and verification of design on the very early phase of our design when 
coders or designer are still working on their models, we can start our testing in here. The process is fully automating, just like before we receive a report from our work and some visual indicators of the process. Let's just wait a moment for everything to finish and there we go. The report includes all the information about uh, testing environment and what was checked. Uh, when it comes to that logic, we are verifying our model under decision and condition uh, standards. The model itself has information which components passed successfully and are verified in 100% and where something was detected. Additionally, this tool is able to compute automatically the output ranges of our components. Uh, this way we can optimize our model for specific unit times when transitioning, for example, from uh, floating point numbers to fixed point. And this is the key uh, way of determining the uh, solution of our model if it's verified successfully or not. Through the initial constraint, for example, expected input range of our signals, uh, design verifier is able to derive signal ranges of every component in our model and then determine that in some part of our component when input signal has specific range, we can expect an overflow error just like we can see in here. This transition is tested correctly, no overflows at all. And important thing is here that this tool will not only tell us something is correct or not, but it also will prove to us by generating a test scenarios, which can we simulate and verify that, yes, the tool was right. We don't have any overflows error in here, but for example, in here on the right part with this red transition, something unexpected can occur within cast of VApp variable to integer and inside. And of course, for the error, we have a specific test case to prove to us it's working like that. And of course, a test hardness for simulation. This is the key point of testing in MATLAB and Simulink and for the tools we are using here. They tell us not only what's wrong, but also prove to us it's wrong so we don't have to take their word for granted, but we can test it personally and be 100% sure. And when it comes to testing in MATLAB and Simulink, uh, the key tool for that is Simulink test. It helps us automate creation of test harnesses that usually consists of a model we are testing, so-called system under test, some kind of input, uh, test cases, and of course the uh, output check blocks that are determining whether the test, test scenario was successful or not. The process of iterating test harnesses is very simple. We are specifying name for our test harness, then we select what kind of import blocks we want to have and what we want to have on the output. For example, data can be loaded from uh, external text files and can be saved back to the drive. The verification itself can work in different form from beside normal simulation, you can perform seal and fill in the loop tests. This is also supported. And we can specify the destination for our test harness. Normally, all the test harnesses are saved inside our model. This way, we have access to all the test scenarios in here. Having them include into the component we are designing 
uh, is very good for our project. We don't have many files that could uh, make our design unreadable. It very simplifies things. Once we create a test scenario like that, we can simulate that, verify results and move on to the next stage. But beside this manual test scenario creation, we have a tool called Test Manager. Uh, this is something that greatly helps us with automating testing of component design in MATLAB and Simulink. Uh, we can create our scenarios in here and then perform batch testing of our components, uh, including computation on uh, clusters to speed up all the tests. When it comes to designing our test scenarios inside the test manager, first of all, we need to specify so-called test suite, a package for our test. In each, we create specific test scenarios. From the case templates supported out of the box, we have common baseline test when we check our model, our design against a set of baseline signals. We have equivalence test where we can, for example, compare our model to the generated code through seal or peel simulation. Of course, we have standard simulation test and additionally, uh, test manager supports real-time test, so hardware in the loop testing on real-time targets. Once we create some test cases, through this interface, we are able to specify conditions for our testing. For example, we can link test back to requirements just so we can track the verification of our requirements. We can see this is traceability all over again. Uh, when we first check traceability of our model to requirements, now we are verifying if each of the requirements is tested by appropriate test scenario. This is the verified column. In here we will see indicator whether a test case is connected to requirement, if the test passed or failed. Additionally, we've specified the system under test and of course inputs for our system. The inputs can come from external documents like Excel spreadsheets or text files, we can import them here without the need to modify the model that we are testing. So we do not alter functionality, but just inject our test scenarios in here. Same for the baseline criteria, we can specify a set of signals from external documents. Also, we can specify in here the allowed tolerance for error and of course the assessment for pass fail criteria. It can be written manually using standard MATLAB function or we can use uh, logical and temporal assessment construct, basically a state machine that will be verifying if our model behaves correctly or not. Once we create all these scenarios, configure everything, we can begin our batch testing. All the tests included in the test suite can be performed automatically. If you are using a parallel computing toolbox, we can speed up everything with uh, computation on servers. And once is everything done, we can move on to the result analysis. The interface for analysis includes automatic comparison of our signals for baseline test. We can manually check which signals we want to compare. Additionally, we could see this green outline that is telling us whether the signal is within allowed error range or not. And of course, basic information about our uh, test suite and additionally, report generation to document all the tests. In here we can configure 
the basic information as title, author, select the output uh, file format, and decide what we want to include in the final report. And here, after testing, we have automated documentation, which includes all the configuration specifics of our test, and of course, the results and whether test passed or failed. Quickly, without any manual work to document what we've just done. When it comes to testing, it's very important to be sure that our design was tested in highest possible extent. Uh, for that, we can support our work with Simulink coverage tool, which is able to analyze coverage metrics for our model and test tell us which portions were not tested fully. Uh, this tool helps us to, for example, reach the requirement coverage factors, for example, that are required by specific industry norms, uh, because not always the tests that are means to verify functionality of our model will test it in 100%. So here is our component again inside a test harness. We are turning on coverage analysis of our design. We can specify which parts of model are going to be analyzed. And in here we can see that this analysis can uh, take into account not only simulink blocks, but also MATLAB files included in the model or handwritten C, C++ code included through S function into our model. In result, we can use it to analyze test coverage for our handwritten code. So it's not only about Simulink, but also external code too. And Simulink coverage covers all the common coverage metrics such as MCDC, condition decision, or decision and execution. We can specify which kind of analysis one we, we want to focus on. And then we can begin the analysis. When we create multiple scenarios for our component, we can turn on cumulative collection of coverage. This means that uh, coverage can be achieved not through single simulation, but by a set of simulation for different scenarios. If the test signals are included through signal builder block, there is one button to simulate all these scenarios and generate coverage report automatically. Once it's done, the coverage results are highlighted on our model. Green means 100% coverage, red means something is missing. Once we click or hover mouse, our mouse cursor over component, we can see the summary of analysis. And for example, here we can see that there is a 18% decision coverage, 0% um, MCDC coverage, and 75% for condition coverage. When we go deeper in our own model into the components, we can see which part of our design were responsible for fade coverage metrics. And here we can see in which case scenarios uh, this transition was triggered, so the decision was analyzed, and in which it was not. This can be starting point for either improving our design or continuing work with developing more sophisticated test scenarios to make sure we test our model thoroughly. And this is a summary for all the test runs. We've included information on all, all these four criteria. And as I mentioned, our test 
that we create manually not always will reach a specific coverage metrics, but uh, they may test our requirements completely. So we are sure that our design is working as intended, but specific industry norms might specify that uh, for a design to conform with this norm, a 100% coverage under specific criteria must be reached. For that, we can help also with automating test scenario generation for reaching 100% uh, coverage criteria. So once we are sure that the functionality of model is tested, we can automatically generate additional tests just to boost up this coverage metrics to 100% as for example, some industry standards might require. For tests that we are using Simulink Design Verifier and Simulink Check, and also the coverage results from previous runs, so from our manual test scenarios. The workflow for automatically generating tests looks like this. We are first specifying which model are we going to improve through automatic test generation. Then we are specifying if we want to extend existing test cases or use existing coverage data. And we are again running the design verifier tool to create test scenarios. This task can be performed additionally through command light interface because pretty much everything we do can be done from a MATLAB script. So in here we are declaring which model we want to test. Uh, then we specify all the option and perform automated analysis. As a result, we are getting a report with information about our test run, the test one, then automatically generated test scenarios and total achieved coverage, which is in here in the report 100%, so everything worked as expected. When it comes to additional task of testing our design, we can use so-called property proving. Uh, that is a method of formally verifying our uh, requirements. For example, we are specifying that input signals, when they are in specific range, then the output signals of our component will, for example, always be at specific level or will never reach specific value. Uh, again, as with other tools, when we specify this assumption and we want to prove this property, uh, Simulink Design Verifier will not only tell us whether we were uh, correct or wrong, but it also will generate automatically a test scenario to confirm its decision. And on every stage, we can generate documentation and reports of our work. Uh, in here, the report generator includes a dedicated API for creating uh, report uh, scenarios, report templates and we can also automate our testing uh, task through report generators. For example, by specifying that during the test report generations, we will simulate our model, we will perform specific tasks. Uh, in the template API itself, we can use MATLAB syntax to simulate model extra specific parts of our model or the simulation results and include them inside documentation, just like this. And important part when it comes to simulink verification and validation process is that MatWorks tools are supporting several continuous integration environments such as Jenkins, Travis, CI, Circle QA and so on. This way, we can automate all these tasks from the uh, development to testing, 
uh, reviewing our change, changes and deploying the solution. Uh, because for each part of this sample continuous integration workflow, uh, we can map specific MATLAB and Simulink tools. In the development process, we'll be using uh, mostly the MATLAB and Simulink and other toolboxes with specialistic functions. Uh, during the test phase, we'll be working on Simulink check, test, and coverage for this test scenario generation or static formal verification. For the merging, we have the tool MATLAB compilation tool that let us compare contents of model or scripts and decide which parts should be changed. MATLAB and Simulink project uh, is the gateway for many version control systems such as uh, SVN or Git. And of course, during the verification phase on the CI system will again use the uh, testing tools, but also we can automate the implementation and code testing by triggering automatic code generation with MATLAB folder, Simulink folder, and embedded folder for C, C++ production code generation. And of course, final tests such as seal and fill. Uh, this way, when we are testing our design through simulation, we are able to uh, verify it early in development process to make sure that final implementation will be correct. And when it comes to implementation, coders, MATLAB coder, Simulink coder, embedded coder allows us to generate the standardized ISO ANSI C production code optimized for specific hardware architecture. Uh, we have the interface to fully customize our code, include additional handwritten pieces of code, integrate external libraries with Simulink models, or integrate whole Simulink generated code inside the external integration environment for implementation in bigger system. For the automatic implementation, there are several uh, popular microcontrollers supported through so-called uh, hardware support packages, but of course there is a workflow where a user can add his own uh, tool chain and hardware to the Simulink environment and perform all the uh, code testing tasks inside the Simulink environment. Additionally, when generated code, the final code generation configuration is verified against the coding standards such as Mistra C2012 or the CERT C. And again, we have this traceability back to the requirements to make sure that each portion of our code is related to a specific requirements. Additionally, uh, we have interactive links from the code back to the model, so we can track the specific implementation of each our model component back to the source code. And again to the requirements documents. The source code itself is for us to use in any way we can possibly imagine with a commercial license for the coders. It's the generated code is our property. We can use it commercial solution, fully modify, customize, and integrate in any way we want. The code generation workflow starts from selecting a hardware or define our own hardware with specific processor architecture in mind. After that, we can perform optimization task on our generated code or specify the report generation settings. And then we simply click the generate code button and everything done is in background. As a result, we get the source code and a code generation report, which is by default in HTML format. This means we can share this report with anyone even people who do not use MATLAB and Simulink. And in here we have full 
algorithm we just implemented, every single subsystem that is, is contributing to the model functionality. And last but not least, when we generate our C code, we want to verify additionally if it's behaving just like the model, because while this is the idea that everything we can see during simulation in model will appear exactly the same in the generated code, but if we include in our model additional handwritten code, something we created or we have external libraries, additional verification can be required. In here we are using the embedded coder seal and peel uh, testing to verify, for example, whether the generated code behaves exactly as the model or whether the actual implementation in processor is giving the same numerical results as the model. Additionally, through the polyspace tools, we are able to perform a static formal verification of source code. What before Simulink Design Verifier was doing on model, now Polyspace does the uh, does on generated code, but also any handwritten code we have. It detects mostly same kind of common runtime errors, and again can be uh, automated through the uh, C continuous integration system such as Jenkins. And for the code testing inside MATLAB and Simulink, we have the classic testing methods such as software in the loop, processor in the loop, and we can additionally perform hardware in the loop testing through uh, real time hardware to verify dynamic functionality of our design. So in the software in the loop, component we are testing is being converted to CC++ source code, then it's compiled on the host system and run alongside the simulation in Simulink. In the peel, the code is implemented in the target processor and anal in analogic way, we are verifying its correctness against the model. And in the hardware in the loop, in additional real-time hardware, we can implement, for example, the plant model and check how our controller is working against a real-time uh, model of our plant. Or other way around, we can implement our control algorithm on the real-time computer to test its functionality against simulation in MATLAB and Simulink. And to sum up, the verification and validation process with MATLAB in Simulink allows us to start testing tasks early on the beginning of our design, just to make sure we don't find some critical errors on the final phases of our project. And thank you for attention. If you have any question, this is the time for them. Okay, awesome. Really great presentation. Thank you for that. Uh, I know uh, it's been, for me personally, it's been a few years since I've last uh, used a math lab, so basically since university. But this was a great reminder just how powerful uh, MATLAB and Simulink really is and the, the advanced capability that it has that I personally didn't even know uh, existed. So, so thank you for sharing that with us. Um, we do have some time for questions, so if anyone has questions, this is uh, the chance to uh, be able to ask them live. Uh, uh, if you don't uh, have any questions now, then uh, you could always ask them later, but this is your last chance to ask them live. Uh, we have uh, a few questions. One question would be, uh, at the beginning, you said that MATLAB and Simulink can work with different programming languages like C or C++. Uh, if I use uh, such features in my model, can I still use testing tools such as Design Verifier and Simulink Test? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, Simulink Design Verifier and Test 
are able to work with external C++ code, this code has to be included in a simulink model in a specific way, so-called S function. But once we do that, we can analyze, for example, coverage of our handwritten code or perform simulation test of these components defined by our handwritten C code. Okay, okay, good. And uh, one more question we have time for uh, would be, uh, many of the tools that we could see in uh, the presentation use uh, graphical interfaces for configuration. That means there is a lot of manual work to configure and start analysis. Is there any command line interface available? Uh, yes, uh, just like we've seen pr during presentation in the coverage uh, analysis, we could perform this analysis through command line through script. Additionally, pretty much everything we do in Simulink through the graphical interface, we can automate it through scripts. There is so-called uh, Simulink API with set of function to work on models without actually opening these models or even uh, creating them manually. And with that, we can automate uh, anything with uh, MATLAB scripts to include, for example, in automated continuous integration environments. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, thank you for the, your response. Uh, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for, for questions. Uh, but it's never too late to uh, still ask questions, so if anyone else uh, would come up with, with any questions maybe later, uh, please uh, do uh, on uh, Discord on uh, Konrad Kolski's uh, channel and he will answer them uh, in the, his most convenient time. So once again, Konrad, thank you very much for your presentation.